Welcome, Chosen One. What is up, Aceholes? Welcome back to another Gwent video. Today, I'm just gonna hopefully quickly go through uh, the results of the Balanced Council votes. Uh, they are in. And uh, we got 40 changes, which is the maximum possible. Uh, I hope that continues, because uh, it could potentially go as low as 12. But uh, I think we would have to lose quite a bit of community size for that to uh, happen. So 40 changes, which is pretty exciting. Uh, I'll be going through them. Uh, probably go into detail on some of them. Uh, just the ones that I care the most about. Uh, but I will not be you know, spending five minutes on each card, which I have done in the past for similar things. Uh, so we're just, we're just going to get right into it. Uh, I'm going to go faction by faction. And, uh, yeah, just do like a quick quick review with some longer sections, potentially. And, uh, you know, uh, in general, a general consensus from my part at the end. So, first off, Regis Bloodlust did get nerfed to 18 power. This is great. I said in my video, I don't really care about this. Um, but I do acknowledge that it needed a, a nerf. And I personally think 18 looks way prettier than 19. So, good change. I'm happy with it. Second, uh, no surprise at all. Frenzy Dao got reduced to 5 power. Uh, this card at 6 power was very much uh, a staple in mid-range decks. Just this and one Rock Barrage was in just a lot of mid-range decks. Uh, good play, thinning, removal potential. It was all around good card. Uh, in, in a Construct deck, this, this card is obviously still spectacular. If you can play the two Rock Barrages and progress your other Constructs. Uh, but maybe now, you know, in, in other types of decks, it is just... A 9 for 7, the thins for 1. Not as interesting anymore. Uh, could potentially still see play, but... Honestly, I didn't mind it as a mid-range card, 10 for 7, but but I do I do see the, uh, the reasoning behind this, so it's a good change. Uh, next up... Is Prince Villem. He's now 1 power. A lot of people were voting for this, obviously, because it happened. Um, it's another one I don't really care. I don't think this changes anything. The problem with Willem, I feel like it was never the fact that he gave your opponent two points, as opposed to just one. I think this could have been just a special card that didn't give your opponent any points, and still be a unplayable effect. You know, Gwent decks have a lot of gold cards, and a lot of which... You know, it's not always the right time to play them. Uh, some you really need to save. Um, and just playing a random one from your deck, it's such a terrible effect. This works in very niche things, like V is going to be happy to see this, where every, literally every gold card in the deck can be played at any time, because it all just plays V. Prince Villem was already played in that. He'll continue to be played in that, just slightly better. But I... I'd be surprised to see this in anything else uh, remotely playable uh, that needs Villem. But it's... Sure, buff the card, that's okay, but uh, it's just weird. Moving on, we do have... Uh, going to Nilfgaard. A lot happened here. Thirsty Dame is back to 5 provisions. Look, she was five provisions for like four years. And, you know, the, the archetype has gotten buffed since. Uh, more ways to instantly proc her, uh, more ways to continuously proc her. I think this card is worthy of six provisions, and we should just buff other things in the status deck. Uh, you know, things that could also become better in other decks. But, but leaving the status deck the same. So I'm not happy to see this. I think she is... Her ceiling is so high. There's There are many ways to trigger her instantly now. Uh, not as many as maybe other similar cards, but still. She can quickly go to 6, I feel. 
Just a pikeman. Instantly puts her to 6, maybe even 7. And she's just going to be on the board, go to 20 points. It's a little bit crazy. Uh, we also have Slave Driver back to 3 power. This, I, I... I don't mind it. Um, I really don't mind it that much. Except for one particular interaction, and that is Nausicaa Sergeant, who did get buffed back to 4 power. Here's the thing. Nausicaa Sergeant at 4 power, I'm okay with. Slave Driver at 3 power, I'm okay with. These two together, a bit much. It's a bit much, and it's also incredibly boring. And like the fact that this combo was still played, even when they were both one less power, they were still played, they were still boring, uh, because of how much I saw them. The fact that they're now just, you know, back to back to former glory. It's just it's every Nilfgaard deck because it triggers to simulate. It triggers tactics engines. It's a good play. It's just, it's soldiers, armor. It's 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 a bit much, and I really don't like the fact that they both got buffed at the same time. That kind of sucks. But uh, whatever, we'll see. I I don't think it's good, especially that both of them got buffed. But we'll see. Hunting pack is four provisions. Uh, three new bronze thinners were reduced to four provisions this patch. This is one of them. I don't think it was the right thing to do. Uh, the only thing I can say is that I feel like Nilfgar. I don't know if Nilfgar will use this. They already have so much consistency, so much tempo thinning. And a lot of them play Calvet. Which will just put these at the very bottom of your deck. Like sure, if you draw one in your opening hand, then you do have that 8 point play that thins your deck. But it doesn't actually improve your draws at all. It is just an 8 for 4 play. So I'm not actually sure this will be used. Which I'm actually interested to see. But I don't think it's right to put them to 4 provisions. I think 5 power is just a better option. But uh, I am curious to see if they're going to even see play. Uh, Lydia is now 8 provisions. I see a lot of people complaining about this. Because oh, she's, she's, she's a better forest protector. She's a better Trist Telekinesis. In many ways, yes. But I feel like both of those cards are still... Over, over, not overpowered, underpowered. And Lydia wasn't seeing play. I, I haven't seen her. I haven't seen her since she was released. Just a few people played her at release and then just, where's Lydia? I think it's a really cool card. It's a perfect example of what I think a simile should be. Not just spamming battle preparations and Nausicaa Sergeants, but playing your opponent's cards. Actually copying your opponent's combos. And Lydia is a perfect card for that because she will either let you play a specific bronze special card that the opponent has played. But if there is none, or if they suck for you, then you do have the backup option of just playing a, you know, creating a bronze special from their faction. So you're, you're still doing the fun assimilate thing, but she even has the potential to be extra specific to your opponent's deck, which I, I love Lydia, and I, I don't hate this buff at all. I think it's good. I think it's very good. Last up, Ivar Evil Eye is back to 4 power. Now, this is a buff. Uh, going from 5 to 4 power is a buff for him because obviously he swaps his power with an enemy unit. So the smaller Ivor is, the bigger the swing is in your favor. Um, Ivar is a card I don't mind. Uh, he's never really seemed that prevalent, so just buffing him back to 4 power, I, I don't hate it. Of course, if he be does become too prevalent, then I will hate it. But for now... Potentially a good change. Let's move on to NR. That is Scoyatel. What got changed in NR? Not a lot. Um, Inspired Zeal got buffed back to 15. I think that's good. 
Inspired Zeal in itself is not a 14 provision leader. It's just not. The problem is all the dem events of the world and like the things that people are using Inspired Zeal for and it's not their fault. Like the devs put these cards in the game. And it's just it's a strange disparity between cards that are incredibly busted and an actually interesting pro properly balanced leader I'd say that enables them just a little bit too much so it's not the leader's fault but the leader has taken the fall for it in the past now it's back to 15 and I, I think that's very fair for the leader I just don't know uh, like in, in the big picture how is this going to look with, with them event other stupid greedy order cards they have because they have a few Vincent Mace is up to 3 power um, Vincent Mace is it, it's a cool card um, it's a cursed card and it works with another cursed card which is Cade Bunny Revenant and it's an interesting effect you know just setting something to 1 with the limitation that it can't be a boosted unit so you know you're, you're quite limited on uh, which targets you can get, how big of a target you can get. Um, but I feel like, you know, his effect is cool. Uh, six provisions is probably appropriate. So I think buffing his power to more properly accommodate uh, his power level is a good thing. Speaking of three power, I uh, just reset my filters. Redanian Archer. Finally, a buff to this card. Used to be a staple in NR, especially in Revenant decks, and it just fell off. I think I think a three is pretty good, right? Because it comes down to three power. You get an instant ping. That's four points. Uh, and then it's either going to demand removal, or at least you know two damage to be wasted on the armor. So if the opponent can can deal two to this, shut shut off the effect. First of all, you already have an extra charge from the turn you played it. So it still plays for 7. If they don't kill it or lock it. Uh, so I think I think the stats on this are pretty appropriate now. Uh, I'm glad it got a power buff and not a provision buff. Uh, we need better 5 provision cards and not just bumping everything to 4. So I'm very happy with this change. And I hope this card is playable now. I really do, because I, I like the card. And... Uh, yeah, three power suits him. It really does. Now for the Skalish, Kraken is now five power. Um, I would have much preferred a, a provision buff here. Because Kraken, the five power, yes, it makes turn you play him is worth one more point now. Um... Uh, it's now easier to kill it and get the Death Wish, but it's now worth one less point on your side as well. Now Kraken is already pretty big on your side most of the time, and with the storm and everything, like it plays for good points, and maybe just making it easier to kill is a good buff. Because it, it's very it's a double-edged thing. It's a disloyal unit that becomes loyal. That's a very rare thing. So it's very much a double-edged sword. I think overall, I will say it's a buff. O overall, I I'd say it's a buff, uh, but it's a minor one, and I don't think it's the one Kraken needed. But it's nice to see Kraken get some attention, but I, I don't think this is it. I really don't. Compass is back to 10 provisions, which uh, is going to screw with my OCD in my uh, Little Mermaid's deck, Thick Mates. Because now I don't have an 11 provision card. I have 10 and 12, but nothing in between. Um, this was unexpected, because I hadn't really seen any talk of Compass being buffed. But I, I think it's a decent change. Um, like It was still being played at 11, which might have been an argument to keep it there, but... The important thing with Compass is that it can't be played with Golden Necker. 
Outside of Necrodex, Compass is harder to pull off. And, you know, 10 provisions is a significant leap from 9. So I, th I think we should try this at 10. We should give this a proper chance at 10. If it ends up being oppressive, then we know 11 is the spot. But I think, I think 10 is fine. I don't think we're gonna regret that too much. Coral is back to 6. Good. Her buff to 7 was just weird it's just strange it made no sense back to six where she belongs good flaminica is up to eight provisions now i suggested this on reddit when i first revealed like my first draft of the council and i got some some critique for having flaminica on there as a contender for provision nerf and like the argument against this change was always but Beast is not a good deck. It's like a tier 3 meme deck at best. Or something like that. Sure. But I would rather we just... Make the Beasts themselves better. Just make the overall deck better. And then you have to pay more for this huge finisher. Easy 20, maybe 30 points. In these all-in Beast decks. And yes, all-in Beast decks... Like, you're, you're sacrificing something to play that all-in base deck. Like, you're, you're running Musicians of Blaviken without the, the free thinning. You're running, you know, the the Sea Serpent thing. That sucks. But honestly, like, Flaminica being so huge for 7 provisions uh, was a good payoff for it. I think this card is definitely worthy of 8, maybe even 9 provisions. And we should just buff the rest of the deck because because the deck contains a lot of cards that actually aren't that good so i think it's a good change i know people will disagree with it but this card does not belong at seven just because its deck sucks going to five uh skirmisher back to five uh same as with coral Stupid buff in the first place. Super glad it's back where it belongs. Justice. Bear Witcher is now 9 power. I don't think that was needed. But I also don't think it's going to be super busted. Uh, Skellige Witchers did need some help. Um, and you know, I, I've played a bit of bit Bear Witcher. I've played quite a bit of Bear Witcher. In my life. And that Adrenaline Condition sometimes actually really hurts it is a real condition so you know should the card still play as nine for five that deals three damage it's really good but uh i'm interested to see how this one pans out this this could be fine this really could be fine queen's guard Queen's got get a buff. Not the buff I voted for. Uh, I was on team provision buff. Because... When they're 5 power, they need 2 damage to go Berserk. Which means that... Stuff like Harold Houndsnout... Can't trigger a Queen's Guard by itself. Ursine Ritual, the leader, needs 2 charges to trigger a Queen's Guard once. And uh, Bear Witcher Quartermaster can no longer trigger Queen's Guard twice. But in return, Raging Bear, Swellblood Butcher, Swellblood Totem, most importantly, and Terror Crew, Terror Crew Plunderer, you know, now all still trigger Queen's Guard, but in a more valuable way. And I, I am very well. I'm already experimenting with this change because uh, I'm very open to it because of Swellblood Totem. Swellblood Totem being not overkill damage anymore, but being perfect damage for Queen's Guard, I think that's huge. Because that's just a permanent Queen's Guard enabler on the board, potentially for two rounds. And that is so strong that it maybe just negates the fact that Erstein Ritual is not as good anymore. So I'm very open to it, 
they felt very good at five when I play tested a little bit in practice mode. Like it just it it flowed very well. So I'm I'm very open to this change. Uh, it's a buff to Yennefer Illusionist in Queen's Guard. And because you know it deals five damage per proc, which rarely matters, but sometimes will. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm very open to this change, even though it's not the one I voted for. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna give it a go. I'm excited. Queen's Guard buff. Uh, it's still a buff. I I will not. There, there's no doubt in my mind that this is a buff. But it, even though it nerfs in some ways, but I think overall it is a buff. I feel like it also makes Ceres Fearless better. Because, you know, when I play Queen's Guard with, you know, all these cards that deal 2 damage, right? I need to deal 2 damage to enable a Queen's Guard. When I then use Ceres Fearless to, to heal that, to activate a new Queen's Guard, you know, it's again 2 damage, which was a bit excessive. Now, Sarah's transferring 2 damage is just perfect. So I feel like she also got better from this in Queen's Guard. So I think so many more cards got better. And... Like, Quartermaster is still fine. Uh, Hound Snout... You know, I'm not sure. You know, Ursa and Ritual, maybe I can live with that. Maybe. So, we're gonna try this out. I'm very hopeful. Um, excited to see anything happen to Queen's Guard because the developers sure as hell didn't want to touch her with a 10-foot pole. But this is this is going to be fun. Last up for Skellige is the aforementioned Bear Witcher Quartermaster. He's now four provisions. I think this is good. You know, I I, I always you know like convinced myself that he he's worth it at five provisions. He's worth it. But I think I was uh, smoking some of that copium. <laughs> because I don't think it was that good. But at four, he is most assuredly a good card. And, uh, you know, for those who don't know, uh, Bear Witcher Quartermaster is another one of the cards that I got to reveal during the Way of the Witcher reveal campaign. So, uh, you know, he does have sentimental value for me. Uh, and I do just overall like the card. I like the synergy with Queen's Guard. I like Bear Witchers in general. So uh, I think it's a, it's a good change. The only thing, like these Skellige Witcher decks, always just ran Portal with Bear Witcher Adepts and no other units. That is maybe gonna have to change. Although these are decent Portal targets. Like, like this can come out of a portal, and you can, you know, it's an order effect. It's got zeal. You can use it uh, just as well as if you had played it. So maybe that still works, but uh, it's it's not as big points, uh, big armor, as uh, as the adepts. But it, it probably still works, actually. Maybe. Scoyatel. Dana is six power. Good. Why a crazy engine like this was ever seven base power is beyond me. Now, in my balance council video, I talked a lot about six damage removal. How I think that is, that should be, that's the golden line. Like, greedy cards should always die to six damage removal. There are exceptions. There can be exceptions. Dana is not a fucking exception, okay? She is so, so greedy. Her ceiling is sky high. Her instant value is huge. She should die to six. She should always die to six. Of course, if you have a chameleon or you have a stratagem to instantly trigger her harmony, okay, at least you put in some effort. But just... Dana slamming down on the board, no, nothing else. Uh, no preparations. She should die to six damage. So, great change. Love this change. 
Now, was she super oppressive? Maybe not, but but now she just feels like a card that I actually want to play. I've been avoiding playing her, because she was so dumb. Now she is actually significantly less dumb. Speaking of less dumb... Oof. Waters of Broccolon. Ten provisions. Yes. Harmony got a resurgence with new cards, a scenario. Good stuff, good stuff. What of Broccolon? You know, the card that spawns two Harmony engines. Did not see play. Then the Fletchings got buffed, you know, to five power. So this was a this is now a ten point play. Two five power engines, just boom. There you go. Didn't see play. Now. It has to be good. Sorry, hair in my mouth. It has to be good. 10 provisions, 10 power, 2 engines. I refuse to believe this is not good now. <laughs> and it's great, because the harmony that I like to play, it has water of broccolon. And there it is. And I couldn't be happier. Great change. Another change, Sorceress of Dolbathana is back to 5 provisions. Um, I don't know how I feel. I think it's okay. Like, the card generates a shit ton of value when it goes off. Uh, quite a lot of value for 5 provisions. But that value is often comparable to Elven Seer, which we have all accepted at 5 provisions. It's an order effect, it can be locked, you can damage it, and then they have to buff it with something else, and then it's it's this whole thing. Um, but like, I like this greedy elf mage archetype with the spells, so I don't mind seeing a buff to it. Uh, you know, this is a way to buff that deck without buffing Simulus, because Simulus is being abused in every other Scoia'tael deck. Like, like, even dwarves, even dwarves are abusing Simless. It pisses me off to no end. But I think this is a fine change. I, I don't hate this. I'm okay with this. Um, Dennis Cranmer went from 7 to 8 provisions. You know, th this card is... It suddenly became like a meta thing. Like, dwarves with armor and Dennis Cranmer became like a big thing. Uh, with Armorer's Workshop. And I... There are people voting for Workshop to go to 6 Provisions. That is not a 6 Provision card. I'm sorry. It's just not. It's it's the synergies that are making the deck strong. And that main synergy is Dennis Cranmer. And... You know, he he's a good card. He has good stats for a high ceiling effect. Nerfing him to 8. Good start. It's not even a start. Like the, He's been nerfed twice now. And I think he'll be nerfed again. There's a good chance of that, but good. This feels more right, and I hope it's a, I hope it's enough. But I don't I don't think it's quite enough. Mahakam volunteers. See now this one. You know I'm generally against all these thinners going to four provisions, but this one is a little bit different because as we have seen. Uh, Mark of Volunteers. You know, it's only played in dwarves. And it has this dwarf condition. You have to control a dwarf. And a lot of Scoia'tael decks now can fit in some dwarves. So it's, it's not like a big deal. But outside of dwarves, those dwarves are often kind of easy to kill. And you know, maybe it's fine. Like... Like, th this is not going to be just slapped into every Scoia'tael deck. That's my main concern with these thinners going to four provisions. Like, you, you saw the Syndicate ones. But then again, you know, the Syndicate ones are so general. Like, have four coins and these work. Pay one coin or just damage one of these by one and they work. They could literally go in any deck. Any Syndicate deck could play those. No problem. Mock of Volunteers. I don't think that's the same story. So maybe this one is actually fine. I would rather them be 5 power, 5 provisions. 
but maybe it's fine. Like, I'm more optimistic towards these than any of the other thinners so far. And if, if these remain contained in dwarfs, then I really don't hate it. Because giving dwarfs some more consistency, why not? Why not? They already have so many powerful four provision cards. Why not give them another one? Like, th there's already too much competition in the four provision slot for dwarves. So I, I don't know if this is even gonna do anything. We'll see. We'll see. All right, let's go to Syndicate. A lot of changes here. Madame Marquis Serenity. Uh, 14 provisions. Up from 13. Good. I mean, th this is a scenario on a stick. Like, it does the same thing as Passiflora. But it's just instant. Three engines on the board. Thins your deck for two. Oh my god. Such a good card. Definitely warrants the 14 provision slot, but... Why does this exist? I don't know. But good change. An overgrad to 12? Uh, like, th this card is crazy. Like, you know, profit three. Okay, whatever. But then you gain one coin every turn for potentially two rounds. And then you have this resilient order effect of just creating and playing a unit. That's, that's a pretty big deal. This is a powerful card. And it was it was released at 10 provisions, right? It's got a double nerf now. Hopefully it's enough. Um, 12, 12 is expensive. And you know, it, it makes sense, like Novograd. Like that's, that is the city that the Syndicate faction is in. So it's, it's cool that it's a pretty expensive card. And I just hope that it's enough. Um, let's see, where is it? Fitter and Elidia. Down from 6 power to 5. Um, I have not seen this card at all. But apparently it was a problem. Um, it's 2 random damage each turn toward 6 but yeah when you do get a death blow it's 2 damage and 2 coins but <laughs> it's random like, when do you ever get that how, how consistent is this like I'm genuinely curious because I've never seen this card be played at all how consistent is that like, there, are, there are ways to slightly increase the odds, but like there's always going to be units that don't die to 2 damage. So I, I don't know. Like, I, I saw a lot of people disagree with this change, and without having actually any knowledge of this card or its playability or its power level, I'm leaning towards disagree, because it, it seems weird. It just seems weird. This one made me laugh. Conjurer's Candle. It's now eight provisions. You know, th this is the card. Every time I see this, I always say, and you can see this in, in a few videos, I always say, I refuse to believe that card is good. I refused it at seven. I refused it at six. And I will continue to refuse this card is good now that it costs eight. Like, it's, it's a resilient spender, and yes, like, the fee, like, you get slightly more points than the coins, but it's not actually, it's not a good coin conversion rate. It only gives you four coins. I refuse to believe it's good, like, I, I get the point of the card, like, I kind of see why people play it. But I feel like you can just, just build your deck with a good assortment of profit versus fee and just cut this card completely and just always have something better to do with your coins so i i refuse to believe that this card is good like 
like someone like me who doesn't play Syndicate ever and who can't manage coins for shit in game or real life, I could use something like this. But anyone who plays Syndicate knows the faction, builds good decks. They can build decks with a good assortment of ways to use your coins. So you you will always have a way to use your coins. You will never be stuck with dead coins. And you'll be using them in a better way than this. So this makes me laugh. Like this is getting the muted generator treatment. Even though it is so much worse. <laughs> in my opinion. Uh, another fun one. I think that's nine provisions. Sausage Maker is now six base power. This card is scary. It is a six for nine Intimidate Engine. With profit three. And then for three coins, it gains resilience. And because it's a fee. Like, you can do it again the next round. This can be a resilient Intimidate Engine for all three rounds. I mean, he's gonna die. Like, he's gonna die. Unless you're playing against me, and I'm playing one of my no-removal decks, of which I have too many. But, look at it. This is a beautiful beast of a card. Um, but, like, it, it felt so good, even at 5. Like, just looking at it, like, on paper, it felt so good. But it didn't see play. But I feel this, this has to put it over the line. 6 base power, engine... Repeated resilience? It has to be good. It has to be good. I refuse to believe it's not good. It's like the opposite of candle. Bouncers are back to 5. Good. Uh, hopefully they also get above to 5 power. Uh, soon. Uh, sewer Raiders were unchanged. But you know what? This was the important one. Sewer Raiders I can maybe deal with. We'll see. But what did happen... Mutant is now 4 power. You know, you could say it's similar to, you know, Queen's Guard, Kate Bunny Revenant. Why shouldn't it be 4 base power? I mean, maybe it's fine. It's a cool card. It's a really cool card. And I, But I've only seen it a little bit. Like, I don't know how dominant this could be at 4 power. But I feel like it's it's certainly a, a powerhouse card right now, and uh, we'll see how it pans out. I don't I don't hate the change at first glance, but it could could be uh, could be scary. Okay, we're gonna move on to monsters first of all. Better go in here because blood scent buff to sixteen provisions. I mean, le leader changes are, you know, can be very hit or miss. I feel like the Inspired Zeal one was good. This one feels kind of unnecessary. Like, it's a good leader. It's a 12-point leader. With a lot of synergy. Synergy, excuse me, for the deck it's played in. So I don't know if this needed to be 16 provisions. Like, I want to buff Vampires as much as the next guy, but... Is this the way to do it? I don't think that's the way to do it. Um, but, okay. Sure. Like, it's it's not going to be a change that ruins the game for people, but it's just, I don't think it's anything. Is it anything? I don't know. Riptide is 9 provisions. Great change. I voted for this one as well. But I knew a lot of people were. Um... This guy is crazy good. I, th I think he is where he's supposed to be now. I, th I think we, we can settle on Riptide at 9 provisions. But we'll have to see. I mean, maybe his prevalence is still crazy good. We'll see. We'll see. Wild Hunt Riders are 4 provisions. Now, now these... Out of, out of the 3 thinning pairs that have been buffed... This time, this is the one that I'm the most iffy on because the condition is just dominance. If the condition was frost-based, then I'd be kind of into this because then it would be more of just a wild hunt buff. 
but this can easily be slotted into every monster's deck under the sun. That's just an 8 for 4 play, thinning, free thinning. It's crazy good. I feel like this one is just too easy. Not as easy as Sewer Raiders, but like if you go first, you always pull this off. Uh, and monsters usually always have something big to just enable the riders, so I... Very iffy on this one. Like, I, I love the buff to Wild Hunt, but... But if this starts seeing play in, like, every monster's deck, because it's just too efficient of a card... I'm gonna be upset. So I think this... Like, vol Mock and Volunteers could actually be a good change. Uh, the Status Dogs Hunting Pack, I think, could easily end up being in, an irrelevant change. But this one, I think th this could be a bad one. This could be a bad one. Speaking of bad ones, Arrakis Queen is 5 power. Who gives a shit? Provision nerf for this card, please. Its effect is abusive, it's crazy stupid. Let's at least make it more expensive, less accessible. Now the lower power, maybe it messes with uh, which is Sabbath plays, because they often do that. But I'm sure they can play around it and, and still get it out at 5 power. And then just repeatedly abuse its effect. Now why it remembers the consumed unit after it's gone to the graveyard, don't units... Shouldn't cards reset fully when they go to the graveyard? I feel like you... You would change this card for the way healthier if you just did that logical move. But okay. Irrelevant change. I, I don't see this changing anything. I would love to be proven wrong, but I don't think I will. I really don't think I will. And now we got Giant Toad. Giant Toad is a really cool card. I love the card. I love it for Death Wish. And I guess at, at 4 power, like, it's potential carryover. It's very often carryover. Uh, it's 2 consumes in 1 card, and it plays played for, you know, 8 points. You know, good. Point slimy value, but also 2 consumes and carryover potential. Alright, alright, that's good, that's good. Um, I think this is still playable at 3. You know, because now it's it's 6 power. Carryover potential, 2 consumes. It's still better than Barghest, in my opinion. It's still better than Barbagazi, but, I mean, this card has not been played in probably 5 years, so... Whatever. I, I think it's a good change, but... I do think there are more relevant changes that you could make to Deathwish if you want to nerf Deathwish. But Giant Toad might might uh, warrant that nerf. On to a buff though. We got the Proto Flutter. He's down to 8 provisions. Uh, really cool card. Really cool vampire. And you know, this in combination with the Blood Scent buff is 2 extra provisions for vampires. And Proto Flutter is, you know, kind of an incentive to stack bleeding on a unit, which you often don't want to do. I mean, Flutter wants you to put big amounts of bleeding at a time. Uh, Proto Flutter, you know, synergizes well with that. Uh, but I do feel like th th this card did seem a little underwhelming at 9, so th this could be good. I think this is right. This looks correct to me. Proto Flutter, eight provisions. Not much to say, but I think it looks good. Uh, Yaga. She's 12. Yeah. She's now two power. I mean, this change I feel is completely irrelevant, except for it doesn't die to one on crate longship anymore. <laughs> or uh, naval supremacy. But they often have both, so she still dies. But regardless, uh, in 
Every other instance, one extra power on Yaga. Uh, it does very little. It does very little. I mean, it's it's a card that doesn't see play. This is a straight up buff. It's not like it's completely relevant, but I don't know if this will change the card's playability. But I'm curious to see. Could be. Could be something. Lastly, Cave Troll is back up to 7 power. Okay, I mean, I... It's like the only defender still being played. Like, the Nilfgaard one sometimes sees play. The Syndicate one sees play in Salamander decks, but just because it's 3 Salamander units, like, you don't really care about the defender. It's the only one that's still, like, properly being abused. Like, even Skellige stopped abusing their defender. Cave Troll is like the only one because it can be rezzed and it just protects stupid Arrakis Queen, uh, Keltullus, Shenanigans. Uh, I mean, whatever. I, I want all defenders to just be killed. Um, but, but seeing as this is the only one that's really being played, like, I liked it being less powerful than the others. Just because. Um, it, it wasn't, like, objectively speaking, it probably wasn't right for this to be 6 power and the others untouched. So, like, this is fine. But, like, I I hate defenders. Like, why even bother buffing them? Like, I know it's just a revert of a nerf, but why? Why do it? All right. I do think I covered all the changes there, all 40 of them. And overall... <clears throat> like, the things that most desperately needed reverting got reverted. <clears throat> and it was only like three... Like three spots were used for that. Which is not terrible. Like three out of 40. Um, some very... Very good nerfs uh, outside of reverts. Uh, Riptide is good. Madame Serenity is good. Novograd is good. Uh, Dennis Kramer was good. Dana was good. I'm not going to list everything that's good. Um, very skeptical of all the Nilfgaard reverts, though. Especially like all three of them coming at once. That. How does that happen? Like, if it were one of them? Like, oh, Nozzle gets back to 4 power. Okay. Sure. But, like, all three of them just suddenly... Ha! <laughs> we're back. I'm kind of worried about that. And, yeah. Quite a few spots, like, overall, were used to revert things that have been done in the past. Including Compass. Um, but that was a good change, I feel. Putting it back to 10. Uh, like, uh, th this is my first balance, count balance, balance council. Wow, I'm not quite awake. It's my first balance council. Uh, first time partaking, first time talking about it in videos. Um, and it, it's very meh. Some good things, some bad things. A lot of, I feel, irrelevant things. Uh, the only good thing I will say... Is that unlike the previous three? Like, I don't feel like there were any like super weird, out of nowhere uh, things that just had no explanation, and we have to desperately revert them next time. I mean, sure, sure, the the bronze thinners, but again, with the exception of Walton Riders, I'm actually not too scared of those this time around and and yeah it's just just overall just nothing that just came out of nowhere uh, that I feel it like will really ruin the game but again there were bad changes in my opinion there were bad changes there were good changes um, so I'd say meh 
<laughs> it's very meh. Uh, rating out of 10. Let's, let's do that. Let's do a rating out of 10. Uh, for the for the overall balance council patch. Um, you know, I'm saying meh. I'm saying very mid. But I am more positive than negative. So I'll... I'll say 6. 6 out of 10. Uh, maybe 7. I'll say a, a strong six. A strong six, uh, but I leave it open to be upgraded to a seven uh, once we get into the patch. Like, th th there were so many things that I can't really know right now if are if they're going to be good or bad. But like, if if the queen scar change ends up being really good, if the bronze thinners uh, end up not being as impactful. Stuff like that could could bump it up to seven, but for now it's, it's a solid six out of ten. All right. <laughs> uh, thank you for watching. Let me know down below what you, how you feel about the uh, the patch, the balance changes, uh, which one stood out to you. I know there's going to be a lot of negativity uh, towards a lot of these changes, and I get it. I I hold some negativity too. I really do. And, and by, by all means, discuss it down below. Of course, I'm not, I'm not going to say don't leave negative comments. But uh, try to be open-minded. Like, we, we have to... Like, at this point, like we, we just have to accept that this is how this works. And we, we have to just try to find a way to deal with it. And as, as fun and relieving as complaining is... Trust me, I know that we, we got to just work on our tactics to try to hone in on better changes, uh, take more control of this, and, uh, you know, it's, it's still early, you know, it's, it's the first time I'm participating and, you know, trying to involve my community in this a little bit more. I know my, my influence has vastly reduced uh, during my absence, and that, that's fine, but... Maybe there's still someone out there who will listen to my words and we can make a difference at some point. You know, there's... We still have a... Uh, we still have a Morkvark to buff. Like, I swear, Morkvark to 6 power is a golden buff. We gotta do it. We have to. Please. Alright. This ended up being way longer than I wanted. So, that's something. So I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks again for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed listening to my, my review of Balance Council number 4. Uh, strong 6 out of 10. Potential for 7 if, if uh, some of the changes pan out in, uh, in the way I hope they do but fear they might not. Until next time, have a good one. And uh, we'll get to some gameplay next time. And uh, maybe try some Queen's Guard. Uh, if I can put together a list for that. But yeah, have a good one. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye.